Most likely it will sound a little bit weird, but there are a few little tips which should help you to collect lobworms more effectively. Before going any further, let me explain why you should consider collecting your own lobworms. In my opinion, there are two valid reasons. First of all, lobworms are very, very, actually I will add a couple more varies, very, very effective bait for any fish and some bigger specimens as well. Second reason is that lobworms are very expensive if you would buy them in a tackle shop. So here you have it, two reasons why you should consider collecting your own worms. Alf is waiting, waiting until the worm will give up and then he starts to pull back and here it is, he didn't break the worm and that's a, that's a perch Alfie, right? Yeah, too right. Every single one of them is a perch. <laughs> just all that lot there saved me and everyone else. Alfie's the only one that saved me and Andrew at least 30 pounds in a tackle shop. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Right, in this video I will share with you my top 5 tips which I learned during many many hours of worm chasing for my own fishing. Let's go! First of all, you have to consider the conditions. Worms are active at night or in the dark, so that's the best time to collect them. Then, worms do like when it's damp. They do not like the rain, but they do like when it's damp and like muggy. Then there is a wind. When it's windy, worms won't come out on the surface, so you won't be able to find them and collect them as easy. Then there are temperatures. I found out that the temperatures need to be like from 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. In these temperatures, worms are most active, or at least those are my observations. So here you have it. Pick up a right evening for worm collection, and most likely you will be lucky. As you can see guys, Silf is using green light and that light is attached to his head therefore he has both hand free to catch worms and holds that top in overhand as well. Second very very important tip is about the location. Obviously worms do like to mate on a short and damp grass and obviously that's the best place to look for them. Football fields, grasslands, those will be the best areas to collect them. Here it is, I, I saw just one here. So then, obviously I will try to be like very careful with my steps. Here is a worm, hope you can see it. Here it is. Then you want to like squeeze it down and gently kind of hold it but you don't want to like pull it out immediately but this one wasn't wasn't that deep at all but when they are deeper you have to be more careful beautiful tip number three worms do feel vibrations on the ground or on the surface of the ground therefore you must use soft shoes or shoes which do have soft outsole for example crocs will be the best bet obviously if you will be using soft shoes and if you will be moving slowly and gently on the ground you will be able to get on top of those worms and pick them up quicker before they will go back into the hole i just grabbed one and it was quite deep in the in the in the hole already but i'm not rushing i'm just holding worm's head and kind of feeling when the worm starts to give up then i will start to pull it out you don't want to break them guys here it is it's going out beautiful how about that come on let's focus on the worm yeah here it is I'm going back into the top tip number four worms are light sensitive creatures so set your head torch to settings which will be the lowest but still powerful enough to see the worms from the distance and then you will be able to slowly go towards the worm not spooking it and grab it before it buries itself into the ground okay guys we just located very very big worm probably that's the biggest for us today 
and that worm is actually out completely it will be easy job just squeeze it down Alf is catching another one as well <laughs> here it is <laughs> nice tip number five about the technique once you see the worm and when you grab it you don't want to start pulling it out of the hole immediately because you will break it you want to hold it for 10 20 seconds and then you will feel that the worm will run out of beans or it will run out of energy and then it will go out like itself more or less and then you won't break it it's very very important not to grab it and pull it like crazy because you will break it and it will be no good you will kill the worm so you want to gra grab it and hold it like tightly but you don't want to pull it back immediately 10 20 seconds you are holding it and then it give, give up and you will have full worm and in good condition as well you can see a nice worm here hope you can see it on the camera as well He was going back already, but I will try to get it out still. He's, he's using all his energy to get it out. I can't do anything now. I will have to wait a little bit. Managed to grab it with two of my fingers and victory will be mine in a sec. That's it. He's going out himself. Now let's focus on the worm. Nice, nice, nice. But it will be it from me for today. I hope you'll find this video useful. Also, let me remind you, it's very, very important. You don't want to collect too many worms and then let them die in the tub or discard them. It's no good really. As I said, don't be greedy. Just collect as many as you need for your day's fishing. But that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.